Let's undo this team. Right. The following interview is a very small part of two complex lives. In my experience, a child that has run away or has been thrown away almost always entirely takes the blame. They believe there is something they could have done differently, and their stories are often told from this perspective. Look carefully. Listen intently. Beyond the words that they speak. My name is Chris. I'm freaking 26 years old, born and raised in Arizona. Right. My name is Joshua Hensley, 20 years old, born and raised in California, moved out to Tucson at 17. Okay, so you, why don't you want to start telling your story? How you, get, how you, uh, how you became homeless and... and I, be, uh, I became homeless at the age of 16 because I, I disobeyed my mother. And I used to throw shoes at her and uh, I learned my lesson the hard way. And I got kicked out to a foster home and ran away. And, been sleeping under bridges since then, in and out of jail. Uh, into now. I don't know, it's just the choices I made. I was freaking, I was a little rebel kid, so like, throughout school, I was like ditching school all the time, and then, I guess when I grew up a little more, I realized like, there's a whole world out there, you know, and started staying out all night, staying freaking, staying away from home. And then finally when I realized that my parents like, I tried to run away one time and they didn't like, they didn't even care. I stayed gone for like two days and came back and they were just like, whatever. I was like, dude, I just ran away from home, you know? It was all hard and they didn't even care. So I was like, all right, hit the streets. And then started going to group homes and freaking, to freaking institute, jail institutions. And all children work to discover who they are and where they fit in. They make mistakes and with help will learn from them. But what if no one seems to care? What if what they are rebelling against so is continuous abuse or neglect? I live in an abandoned house, but it does have electricity. It don't have a stove. It has cold water, so you gotta get used to taking showers in cold water. Uh, it's not a place to be, but it's a roof over my head, better than sleeping under the bridge. You know, I sleep under the bridge and behind dumpsters, and it's no fun. Yeah, kind of sucks. <laughs> Can you tell us where you live at? Right now, I'm just... Your living conditions, that is? I'm all around, man. Like, I got some family I stay with about, like, I can go to, like, once a week. You know what I mean? I can stay with them, wash my clothes for a couple days. But, you know what I mean? Then they're like, all right, you gotta, you know, you gotta go. You gotta get, come do something. And I come down here and stare under the bridge and in the freaking tunnels and the washes. The other night, I stayed in a freaking uh, abandoned trailer in this trailer park. You know, like we were hanging out with our friends and like, well, you we can't stay here, but we know there's an empty trailer right over here. So he you let us know. Uh, you have to take the chances of uh, being in a, hopping into empty houses. Yeah. Because if you get caught, you can get charged or break an injury or anything. It's not worth being homeless. It's not worth it. Due to various laws in Tucson, it is difficult to survive on the street without becoming a criminal. Maybe your dealings with the police or... Yeah, being broke, man. You have to freaking steal all the time. You got to freaking watch who your friends are because, you know what I mean, not everybody's your friend. They just want to use you. Panhandle. Yeah, you know, you got to freaking degrade yourself and, you know, steal. You, you have the chance of getting beat up when you ask for money. Yeah. Because they call you low lives. And I have an anger problem, so I like to say something back to them. Okay. You know, sometimes we got to go behind a buffet and hopefully there's food in the trash sometimes. But that's when the worst one's the worst. So can you tell us something about your hope for the future? Uh, uh, probably, possibly, possibility of getting out of homelessness? Get a job. Yeah, that's always a freaking a wish, you know, is to freaking get off these streets, you know, get stable. Some people just don't want to do it. Some people, like me, I, I kind of can't, you know, like, it's kind of hard. <laughs> you know, like, I'll apply it like 10 places, no one will call back. And that's a lot for me, you know. And especially having tattoos, it's hard to get a job. Yeah, and a record and everything. Yeah. They're like, no, we don't want you freaking <laughs> at our register. You're going to freaking rob us. Uh, do the uh, police hassle you very much? Yeah, usually, if they know us. You know what I mean? If they know, well, we, I don't know. Well, I see it. I've been kind of, like, clean lately. So they don't freaking... They don't look at me as much. I don't have like a bunch of gear on my bag. You know, I'm all dirty. That's when they mess with you a lot. They're like, ah, you're just, you know, doing nothing, doing drugs, this and that. 
But it's, it's very interesting. You you meet new people every day, but it's, yeah, you know, totally. You but can just you can end up anywhere, dude. Your stuff gets stolen time to time. Yeah. You know, you gotta stash all your clothes. You gotta stash your toothbrush. You gotta stash everything because you know you have a tent right here, like I used to, right behind you. My tent, and everything got taken. So you take the chances of being homeless, of getting your stuff stolen, and not having a job and no money. And, you know, hopefully have a place to wash your clothes.